Okay, for this video, I will demonstrate how to bring a picture in to help you draw on top of, and also the use of the spline tool. So first of all, you wanna make sure that you are in millimeters. Um, you may wanna use, you'll be using this uh, skill perhaps for your snowflake, perhaps for your ornament design, uh, either one of those projects that we'll be doing here. And you're gonna to wanna to go out to the internet and find the picture that you wanna use. So for this example, I'm just gonna do the, uh, the Star Wars logo of the Rebel Alliance. So I can right click on that and save that image. Okay, I wanna save that and name that perhaps in my downloads folder. And I wanna make sure for Onshape that this is a PNG, a JPEG or a bitmap. Um, that would be the most common ones. I'm not sure if PNGs work in Fusion or not. I know that JPEGs and bitmaps do work in Fusion and on Inventor. I'm not sure about PNGs. So we'll go ahead and save that file. And then back in Onshape, um, it's this image insertion is gonna be inside of a sketch. So we'll go ahead and pick the front sketch plane as usual. And then up here, we have the option to insert a drawing or an image. We want to insert an image. And you're going to select import. You need to find the file you're going to import. Click open. And it shows that file being uploaded. And then you select that file. And you have the option to... Um, draw where you want that picture to be. So it depends, of course, what your goal of this is. Of course, you want to pay attention to sizes, which I'm not doing right now. Do we want this in the middle? Do we want a corner constrained to the origin? And you need to consider your design intent with what we're doing. Okay, but of course, that gives us um, the overall shape. And then uh, I can use my line tool to trace over lines that are basically straight. Same as always, I'm ignoring these little cuts here for now. And then, you know, perhaps the uh, circle tool, try to get close to that overall size. And looks like it needs to be a little bit bigger and perhaps move up. Okay, whatever, whatever you need to do. Okay, and then here's the use of the spline tool. Um, I'll select spline, and I know I want this to follow this kind of crazy curve here. So I make sure I start on the line and just basically trace the curve that I have in front of me. The more curve you have, the more points you need to use. And the more points you use, the closer that the spline will match the curve that you're trying to copy or that you're trying to trace. Okay, when you get to the end, when you wanna end your spline, it's a double click. And then of course I could go and quickly draw the spline on the other side. Um, it would probably be better in this case if I mirrored the shape because then it would be more symmetrical like the logo. So of course that might be something to consider, but in this case, I'm just demonstrating the spline tool and then we're probably gonna see that it's not gonna be real symmetrical when I'm done with this, but a double click ends the spline, can escape to get out of the tool. Of course, as with anything, if it is not fully constrained, you can always move points and slide things around and that will adjust the curve. Of course, with the spline, you adjust one point, as you notice, it adjusts a lot of points. Okay, but that's at least how you use the spline tool. Uh, don't forget about the trim tool. Might wanna trim off the overlapping segments that we don't need. Of course, finish your sketch. Extrude just two millimeters and 
we have a logo. If I was uh, wanting to be a perfectionist, this is not very good. It's not very uh, symmetrical. Um, I would go back and use more points and clean this up, but at least that's how you use the tool.